Around seven to eight years ago, I got a project uh, from my client called Mohammed Riaz. He wanted me to do a sustainable building uh, in a place near Ernakulam. So at that time, seven to eight years ago, I was just uh, five years into doing this kind of architecture, you know, making country walls, ramp and construction, and all those things. So what happened is. <clears throat> I saw that this site had only one jackfruit tree and it was at the corner of the site. And the site's orientation was something which I was very much adamant about. And uh, being a Muslim family, uh, the Riyas and family, um, like one of, I, I grew up in a Muslim country. So I knew how Muslim uh, setup is and how, how many a time uh, that they have a closed gatherings. But being in tropical Kerala, close gatherings definitely means semi-open areas. So I thought around the jackfruit tree we need a beautiful garden. But somehow uh, jackfruit tree appeared to be in the very corner of the compound. Uh, it is very exposed to the public. So I thought maybe it is better if the compound would just curves up into the building. So it's a simple idea that I thought uh, it would serve the purpose. The straight walls we designed were around the walls and uh, the curved walls, I was very much into compressed, stabilized embrace. So basically we procured soil from a five mile radius. Uh, it is a Gandhian philosophy about procuring materials within a five mile radius and making sure that you build it with it. This was something which uh, uh, I learned from Lori Baker and uh, Lori Baker in turn uh, learned from Gandhi, uh, saying uh, the father of our nation, who, who told that whenever we build something within a five mile radius, that is the most sustainable way of building. This is something which I felt is very true even to this day. So nowadays, uh, the one thing which we find a lot in our five mile radius is, is scrap. So I definitely wanted to make sure that I used a lot of scrap in this uh, project too. But one of the things that uh, astounded me while I was doing this project was that I found that my my material uh, palette, which was around earth and CSB, suffered a lot of working stress and they didn't come up to the finish that I really liked. Somehow, financially and a few other things, the project was delayed. And it took almost four or five years for us to reach to a completion stage. But my journey took me to a place where philosophically, I found out that uh, the, the that, that perfect, superficial finish 
is not exactly what defines architecture or what defines a space or what defines a human block. I found that uh, whatever my pieces have done, um, even the errors are something to be celebrated. If, if we can remember that, if we can remember, okay, my Mason Bob made this mistake, I felt those are memories that we should cherish rather than say, these are errors that I should punish. So definitely, uh, during the last stage of project, I thought, that uh, some of the areas where the blocks are chipped or where the 100th finish is not that great, I started liking it even more. We thought those were the things that really defined this way. Today, we are on a path where we see that every material has a life, as, as a birth, it has a life and it, it has a degradation also. And that is something which I cherish a lot. We try to create a different building. So when you go for something which is very innovative, very different, you find that a lot of things which you plan for don't happen exactly the same way. Find that uh, sometimes you know like the staircase. So the staircase was a very tricky one. So when we did the staircase, we found out that you know like uh, what we planned in 3D, yeah, what we did in Rhino, didn't exactly turn out to be the physical reality. We had to we had to fight a lot, and we had to think on our feet. Now thinking on your feet is something which is very. Uh, very not appreciated in architecture. It is, it is from the point to not have a concrete idea of how to do things and come to a site. It is, it is taught as a waste of labor, waste of this thing. But when you are going for something very innovative and new, you have to think about it. You have to be ready for errors at site. And how do you proceed? You can't just say. Uh, something like, uh, okay, that, that error happened, okay, we will again go back to our drawing sheets and start again fresh. You have to think on your feet then and there. So when we were doing the staircase, we thought, okay, we made a mess of the staircase. The threads are not equally aligned. The riser is, is not exactly what we wanted. But, as I said, we grew to do this project. And at this point of time, we were looking at it, the, the chaos in what we ordered is simply making it more beautiful. That every thread has a uniqueness on its own, on, in its own sense, is something which I think should be celebrated.